Previously, we've looked at derivatives in the x direction and in the y direction. In this video, we'll look at derivatives in other directions. These are called directional derivatives. In this figure, lines of equal temperature are drawn on this map of Australia. The distances on the map are given by this scale. Let's assume that these temperatures are given in degrees Celsius. So the temperature at Dubbo is somewhere between 30 and 27 degrees Celsius, maybe about 28 degrees, for example. As we move from Dubbo towards Sydney, the temperature is decreasing to 27, here it's 24, and so on. If we want to find the approximate rate of change of the temperature function f of xy, at Dubbo, going in the direction of Sydney, we can approximate it with the average rate of change. The temperature at Dubbo is about 28 degrees. Temperature at Sydney is somewhere between 24 and 21. Looks like it's closer towards the 24 line. So let's assume it's maybe 23. So the change in temperature, delta capital T, is given by 23 minus 28, or negative 5. But it happens over a distance of what looks like maybe about 300 kilometers. It looks like about the same distance as the scale here. So the change in distance, I'll call that delta D, is about 300 kilometers. So the average rate of change is going to be about negative 5 over 300 degrees per kilometer. That's about negative 0 0.0167 degrees per kilometer. Now that's the average rate of change. It gives us an approximation of the exact rate of change at Dubbo in the direction of Sydney. We could get a slightly better approximation by doing another average rate of change over a smaller distance. So if I use that red arrow and calculate the change in temperature, that's going to be about 27 minus 28, or about negative 1 degree. And the corresponding distance, delta D, is going to be about 50 kilometers based on the scale. So then our delta T, delta D, will be about negative 1 over 50, or about negative 0 0.02 degrees per kilometer. Since we only have limited information about the temperature function, given by a few different contour lines, that's probably about as accurate as we could get. But for a function where we have full information, because we have a formula for the function, we could get more and more accurate estimates of the rate of change by taking smaller and smaller arrows in this direction and calculating the same change in the function divided by the change in distance. That limiting process gives us what's called the directional derivative. So the directional derivative of a function at a point x0, y0 in the direction of a unit vector, u, with components a and b, can be found by starting at the point x0, y0 and heading in the direction of the unit vector u, but traveling shorter and shorter distances along that unit vector and calculating delta f over delta d, that's the change in function over the distance, for all those shorter and shorter vectors. I'll write that as the limit as the distance goes to zero of delta f over delta d. Now to calculate delta f, I'm going to need to figure out f's value at the terminal and initial point of each one of these vectors. Delta d, the change in distance, is just the length of the vector. Now each of these vectors goes along in the direction of u, so it can be written as a rescaled version of u. It can be written as t times u. And since u is a unit vector, by assumption, the length of t times u is just t. And since this vector starts at the initial point x0, y0, it will end at the terminal point x0 plus ta, y0 plus tb, since a and b are the components of u. Therefore, we can rewrite this limit as the limit as t goes to zero, since t is that change in distance, that length of the vector, of f of x0 plus ta, y0 plus tb, minus 
f of the initial point, x0, y0, divided by the length of the vector t. This limit gives the definition of the directional derivative, provided the limit exists. Please note the notation for directional derivative. It's d sub u of f at x0, y0. There's an equivalent way to write the directional derivative of f at x0, y0 in the direction of the unit vector u. It can also be written as the ordinary calculus 1 derivative d dt of f of x0 plus at, y0 plus bt, evaluated at t equals 0. Notice that we're thinking of this expression as a function of t. The reason that this definition is equivalent to the previous one follows from the ordinary calculus 1 definition of derivative. Recall that d dt of a function g of t at t equals a is given by the limit as h goes to 0 of g of a plus h minus g of a all over h. Let's apply this definition to our function. For us, since we're evaluating at t equals 0, our a is 0. So we just need to evaluate our function at 0 plus h. That is, evaluate our function at h minus our function evaluated at 0. So we have the limit as h goes to 0, our function evaluated at h, minus our function evaluated at 0. When I plug in 0 for t, I get f of x0, y0, divided by h. If you look back at the previous slide, this expression here is the exact same expression as our original definition of directional derivative, just with h in the place of t. When we write the directional derivative in this form, we can use the chain rule to gain some more insight into what it means. In the expression f of x0 plus at, y0 plus bt, I'm going to call x0 plus at our x of t, y0 plus bt our y of t, and I'll call the entire expression z. Then we have z is a function of x and y, and x and y are both functions of t. From above, our directional derivative is d dt of this whole expression at t equals 0. In other words, our directional derivative is equal to dz dt at t equals 0. By the chain rule, this is the same thing as partial z partial x times dx dt plus partial z partial y times dy dt. Now dx dt is just a. That's because x is x0 plus a t, and x0 and a are constants, t is our variable. Similarly, dy dt is just b. So we can rewrite dx dt as a and dy dt as b. But dz dx, that's just the derivative of f with respect to x. So that can be written as f sub x. Similarly, dz dy can be written as f sub y. We now have another expression for the directional derivative, and we've proved this theorem. For the unit vector u with components a and b, the directional derivative in the direction of u is given by f sub x times a plus f sub y times b. Notice that f sub x and f sub y are evaluated at the point x0, y0. That follows from the chain rule. Since we're evaluating dz dt at t equals 0, we need to evaluate f sub x and f sub y at x of 0 and y of 0. But x of 0 and y of 0 is what we get when we plug in 0 for t, so that's just x0, y0. So far, we've talked about directional derivatives in the direction of unit vectors. If we have a vector v that's not a unit vector, then the directional derivative in the direction of v is defined as the directional derivative in the direction of u, where u is the unit vector in the direction of v. Note that we do not get the right answer 
if we just take f sub x times c plus f sub y times d, where c and d are the components of the original vector v. We have to rescale first before we write down that component expression. In this example, we want to find the directional derivative of f of xy equals x cosine of y at the point where x is 2 and y is 0 in the direction of this vector v with components 3 and 4. Since v is not a unit vector, I'm going to start by finding the unit vector that's in the direction of v. Since the length of v is the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, that's 5, my unit vector is 1 fifth of the vector with components 3, 4. In other words, 3 fifths, 4 fifths. So I'm looking for d sub u of f, which is f sub x times 3 fifths plus f sub y times 4 fifths. f sub x is equal to cosine of y and f sub y is equal to x times negative sine y. That's negative x sine y. At the point 2, 0, f sub x is equal to cosine of 0, that's 1, and f sub y is equal to negative 2 sine of 0, that's 0. Therefore, the directional derivative is 1 times 3 fifths plus 0 times 4 fifths, or just 3 fifths. In this video, we define the directional derivative of f in the direction of the unit vector u in three different ways. First, as the limit, as t goes to 0, of f of x0 plus ta y0 plus tb minus f of x0 y0 all over t. That definition came from the idea of looking at average rates of change along vectors of the form t times u for smaller and smaller values of t. The second definition of directional derivative was the calculus 1 derivative of the function of t given by f of x0 plus at y0 plus bt at t equals 0. And the third definition of directional derivative, which is the simplest and most useful, is f sub x times a plus f sub y times b. Here a and b are the components of the unit vector, and f sub x and f sub y are evaluated at x naught y naught.